Hello, we're continuing to read from Derek Bell's Faces at the Bottom of the Well, and I'm reading an essay on <laughs> legalizing segregation again, because it may sound weird or it may sound crazy to you, but we can't take anything off the table as far as this society goes, and people just seem to be willing to accept anything, so... I thought this was a really good essay to get into. Well, I acknowledge. I have no doubt that a great many white people would prefer the Racial Preference Licensing Act to traditional civil rights laws. The licensing feature provides legal protection for their racially discriminatory policies, particularly in employment and housing, which whites have practiced covertly, despite the presence on the books of civil rights laws and court decisions declaring those practices unlawful. It is even more attractive, Geneva said, in that thoughtful whites will view the new law as means of giving moral legitimacy to their discriminatory preferences by adopting the theory that whites have a right of non-association with blacks and that this right should be recognized in law. On those grounds, I put it, I put in, the act could expect support from white civil libertarians who think racial discrimination abhorrent but are troubled by the need to coerce correct behavior. Whites will not be able about would not be happy about the equality fund, though these provisions might attract the support of black separatists who would see the fund as a fair trade for the integration they always distrusted. But believe me, Geneva, no such benefits will assuage the, absol the absolute opposition of most civil rights professionals, black and white. They remain committed to the point of obsession with the integration notion that, however widely held in the 1960s, are woefully beyond reach today. Don't start again, Geneva threw, her, or threw up her hands. I understand and sympathize with your civil rights friends. Unwillingness to accept the legalization reincarn reincarnation of Jim Crow. They remember all too well how many of our people suffered and sacrificed to bury those obnoxious signs, colored and white. I think that even if I could prove the Racial Preference and Licensing Act, Preference Licensing Act would usher in the racial millennium, civil rights professionals would be willing to, as they might put it, squander our high principles in return for a mess of segregation tainted pottage. Victory on such grounds is, they would conclude, no victory at all. You mock them, Geneva, but integration advocates would see, would see themselves as standing by their principles. Principles hell. What I do not understand and this is what I really want to get clear, is what principle is so compelling as to justify continued allegiance to absolute civil rights strategies that have done little to prevent and may have contributed to the contemporary statistics regarding black crime, broken families, devastated neighborhoods, alcohol and drug abuse, out of wedlock births, illiteracy, unemployment, and welfare dependency. She stopped to take a deep breath, then went on. Racial segregation was surely hateful. But let me tell you, friend, that if I knew that it return, its return would restore our black communities to what they were before desegregation, I would think such a trade entitled to serious thought. I would not dismiss it self-righteously, as you tell me many black leaders would do. Black people simply cannot afford the luxury of rigidity on racial issues. This story is not intended to urge actual adoption of a racial preference licensing law, but to provoke blacks and their white allies to look beyond traditional civil rights views. We must learn to examine every racial policy, including those that seem most hostile to blacks and determine whether there is unintended potential African Americans can exploit. Think about it. Given the way things have gone historically, if all existed civil rights, existing civil rights laws were invalidated, 
legislation like the Racial Preference Licensing Act might be all African Americans can expect, and it could prove no less and perhaps more effective than those laws that now provide us the promise of protection without either the will or the resources to honor that promise. Most civil rights activists advocates, I replied, would, on hearing that argument, likely respond by linking arms and singing three choruses of We Shall Overcome. You're probably right, friend, but it is your job, is it not, to make them see that racial opposition has polluted the dream that phrase once inspired. However com comforting, the dream distracts us from the harsh racial reality Closing in around you and yours. And um, it's powerful. Sounds absurd. Lockdown sounded absurd. States going bankrupt sounded absurd. UBI sounded absurd. But we have had all of those things in the last few months. Oh, and make no mistake about it, the unemployment, $600 a month, that was UBI. That was universal basic income. So all the things that seem absurd, that seem crazy, that seem out of the, out of the box are possible and plausible. So we'll see what happens. Until next time, um, take care of your mind, take care of your body, and be safe.